Okay, what I'm going to do for you today is go through a example problem for room mixtures using the psychrometrics chart. And the problem that we're going to do is we're going to have 7,500 CFM of chilled air at 57 dry bulb, 56 wet bulb. So you can see it's pretty cold. We're going to mix it with 2,500 CFM of outside air at 96 dry bulb and 78 wet bulb. Um, that's pretty hot. So we're going to mix those two quantities together and we're going to find the properties of the mixture. Okay. The first step that we need to do is to go ahead and mark the two points. Now, if I open up my psychrometrics chart, you can see that that's what I've done here already. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom in just to show you um, how I've marked those points. So with the first one, what I did was I found 57 dry bulb, and then I basically scrolled up till I hit the 56 wet bulb line, and I drew a line here. Okay, so that was pretty easy to find. The second point, which was 96 and 78, um, that was a little bit harder because there's a lot going on up here. So what I did was I went ahead and I found 96, and I drew a line straight up. That way it would be easier to find that. I made it a certain color and I made it a little bit thicker. And then I went down until I found the nine, sorry, excuse me, the 78 degree uh, wet bulb line and there's my second point. So afterwards, I really don't need this point so, or this line, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Now my next step is to go ahead and um, draw a line between those two points. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna insert the line, insert a shape from that point to that point. And I'm going to go ahead again and make that a little bit thicker. That way it's very uh, much easier to see. Okay, I like doing that with this here. Okay, now what I need to do next um, in order to find out where that third point is located, I've got to do some math. If I was doing this on paper, what I would actually do is draw the points and then draw the line with a ruler measure the length of the line and note that so we can kind of figure out that third point is going to be somewhere along that line. Okay, but what I need to do here is since I can't really measure that line, I do have the ruler tool, tool on here and I can turn this around so it actually matches my line. Okay, and I can flip it around and turn it here. But the issue with using this ruler tool in uh, PowerPoint is that when I zoom in and out, the ruler stays. So if I want to zoom in and out and measure that, I really can't use this ruler tool. So I don't like to use that there. What I like to do instead is I like to go ahead and draw in or insert another shape. I like to insert a rectangle. So I'm going to insert a rectangle here. Okay, and I'm going to move it so that one corner is on one point, and I'm going to resize it so the other corner is on that point. Okay, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and figure out what the size of my rectangle is, okay, what the sizes are. In actuality, I could probably use Pythagorean theorem to go across and measure the diagonal, but I don't really need to do that here. I'm going to basically measure the size of the rectangle. So I'm going to go to format shape. I'm actually going to go to size and size and position, and I'm going to write down the size of my rectangle. Right here, it measures 1.53 by 3.53, and I'm going to write those measurements down. Now that I have that size written down, I can go ahead and do some math, and I'm going to do that on the next slide. So if I go to my next slide here, I went ahead and wrote down my size, size of the rectangle, 1.53 by 3.53, just as a reference. So I have that information later. Now I know I want to take a ratio of my airflow. So I'm going to take my, uh, my hot airflow and my cold airflow, and I'm going to add them together to get the total. So 2,500, okay, is my hot flow and 7,500 is my cold flow, and I get 10,000 for my total. 
Now my lower airflow, 2,500 over the 10,000, that's gonna give me the ratio that I need. And it's 0.25 or 25%. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna use that ratio to figure out what the new size of the new rectangle is going to be so I can mark my third point. Okay, so I'm marking my third point. I'm gonna take 1.53 times 25% and that's gonna give me a value of 0 0.38, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and take my 3.53 times my 25%, and that's gonna give me 0 0.88. So that'll be the new size of my rectangle that I need, okay? So I'll go back to this uh, slide. I'll take my rectangle, I'll go back to size and position, and I'm gonna type in the new size here. I'm gonna change the size of the rectangle. So I'll change that to 0 0.38, enter, and you can see it looks kind of silly right now. And then I'll change the 3.53 to 0.88, and it still looks a little silly, and it's out of position. So I'll close my size, and what I can do is I can just pick this up and I can move it to its uh, correct location. Now with this, you can see that the new size, the diagonal on the new size of the rectangle is gonna give me the point in the proper position. So I'll go to my drawing tool, and I'm going to basically mark that new corner, okay? Then I can basically take this rectangle and move it out of the way. Um, I don't really need it anymore. I can also delete it, okay? Now the next thing I need to do is to go ahead, now that I have my third point marked, I need to take my readings of that point, and that's what my resulting mixture is going to be. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the values for my mixture. And if I take a look at this um, and zoom in a little bit, I'll see that my dry bulb is going to be a measurement about 66 uh, degrees. So I'll go to my PowerPoint slide and I'm going to write that in, 66. I'll go back and I'll read my wet bulb temperature. And my wet bulb temperature is going to be about 62.5. If you take a look at that, you can see if you need to add lines in there to actually read the temperature, you can do that. You can insert shapes if you like. That'll help you read things. Okay. But that is going to be 62.5. Okay. My humidity ratio is all the way on the right-hand side. If I look at that value, my humidity ratio is gonna be about 77. You can see there's my 70, there's my 80, so it's gonna be 77. My relative humidity is gonna be on the curve here. So if you take a look at it, it's pretty much right on the 80% curve. So I'm gonna say 80% for my relative humidity. And the last value is gonna be the enthalpy. Now when I measure my enthalpy, it might be beneficial for me to add a line so I can actually um, match the numbers up. For this, our enthalpy value is going to be 27.8. Okay, and there we go.